Hi everyone. So this is the follow-up to the cash flow forecast report. This video will show you how to, I guess, open and utilize the advanced cash flow dashboard uh, in the uh, Business One version for SAP HANA. Uh, so if we take a look in the the um, financials module, financial report, and financial section. Um, so the previous video showed you how to use the um, sort of the long-standing cash flow forecast report and the selection criteria uh, and then run the report and it looks a little something like this and we've got uh, you know projected cash flow over a certain period uh, and I'm just gonna run this crystal report off of here and we'll just leave this crystal report up so there we go we've got that crystal report I'm just gonna close the old school uh, cash flow dashboard. Now the um, down at the bottom of the report section here, so over in the menu items, you've got this cash flow forecast button. Clicking this, and this is an option that will only be available if you're running the HANA version, but clicking this is the same as clicking this dashboard button in the ribbon bar up here, which is cash flow forecast. So I can either click here or I can click here. And what it does is it launches a um, sort of a graphical dashboard. So the data in this report truly is the same as the data that is in the uh, cash flow forecast report. It's just done in a more graphical visual way. So there, there's a few little things that you might like better in using the advanced cash flow dashboard. I think a lot of financial users would probably be fine and may even prefer the the um, current cash flow uh, report that's shown here um, but uh, this cash flow forecast dashboard essentially allows you to get to the same result uh, and see it in a more graphical way so at the very top there's a slider bar so we're gonna select the same range that we did for our previous analysis we're gonna select the cash flow forecast from the 1st of April 2020 to the end of um, August. So to August 30th, 31st, 2020. Okay. Um, so when we change the slider bar, notice how the graph output below will automatically shift to show, you know, it shift its scale to really show um, you know, either weekly scale, monthly scale, uh, that sort of thing to kind of best fit the result to the, the width of what's being considered. So if we, if we move this slider bar out to the end of the year, what will happen is that the graph here will typically automatically scale to show months, you know, for a longer timeline. And then if we dial back this to a shorter timeline, like the one we're considering here, then it will automatically shift those cash flow period to be weak okay um, so there's the 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 slider bar and you can kind of slide this bar by grabbing it forwards and backwards as well and you can see that that even on the slider bar there's sort of like a an up down pattern that that sort of rough is a rough read on the cash flow so that it's it's sort of a a visual clue or helper thing so you can kind of select the right range and you can see that there's not a lot of activity past June that basically means that we don't have a lot of uh, upcoming transactions in the way that we've con configured it now at the top you notice there's a little drop down that that uh, an arrow to a thing that says configuration and this is how you pop open the configuration menu for this dashboard and this is pretty important because if you were just looking at this dashboard and moving the slider bar around um, you know you may not kind of figure out okay well how do I how do I change the parameters of this report so you do so by by clicking the configuration and um, what, so there's a number of things that we can do here. Um, you know, we can kind of look at uh, various measures like opening balance, incoming transactions, outgoing transactions, uh, and various forecasting here. Uh, in order to kind of know more about this, we'd probably have to do a more um, kind of in-depth video to talk about the sales forecast, the expense forecast. Um, but uh, at a high level, uh, what really this dashboard is showing you is the the anticipated transactions, the the uh, 
uh, as they go forward. So the the criteria here is very similar to what it was in the the existing cash flow report. You know what are we considering as far as upcoming transactions? So we've got journal vouchers, uh, delays in payment, draft documents. Why don't we just switch all of that on there and see if it makes a difference? Blanket, recurring transactions, recurring postings. And if any of these exist on the system, then they will be included in the, the upcoming forecast. Okay? Um, so yeah, you can see actually that there are some recurring postings that greatly impact the cash flow forecast. And I'm just going to take that off because it's sort of skewing the data a little bit. Okay. So uh, we'll, we'll consider what's there. Now, the other thing that, that you can do is you can change uh, the certainty level. So this is sort of, you know, kind of parallel to what uh, the previous report would call uh, security security level, um, but it's certainty level of the transactions that are here. So we can dial this certainty level back to, I think, anywhere from level one to level eight, and you can see that it will impact your, um, you know, your cash flow forecast report. So if we wanted to see things at, at, I guess, basically the most conservative or the highest certainty level, and we dialed it right back to zero, then it sort of takes everything to a baseline. But at certainty level one, uh, we kind of move the slider here and it's showing us very conservatively what our cash flow forecast would be. And then we can go to certainty level two and it'll adjust the report. Now, what is being considered in these various certainty levels? If we click this little wrench button here you can see that here are the various things that are being considered in the the various certainty levels so one could probably say that certainty level one is a very conservative cash flow forecast all the way up to certainty level eight which is a very um you know a very liberal cash flow forecast i guess <laughs> to use political terms um uh, but or or one that considers transactions that are less certain i guess is the best way to put that um, now you can change what's considered in these certainty levels so for instance you may actually consider both credit cards and checks at certainty level two and you can drag and drop those things in there uh, as well uh, let's say AR and AP invoices were actually considered in certainty level three. So we can adjust which transactions and which upcoming transactions are considered at the various certainty levels uh, of the uh, report. And that's how you would adjust that. So now that we've kind of changed that up a little bit, you can see that the report is um, changing as well. So if we slid this out to, I guess, run a report that um, considered things a little uh, more, uh, you know, considered transactions with less certainty. You can see that you know, obviously there's something in our forecast that is driving the net cash flow down below zero. Now, if you want to know what is actually doing that, um, here's where you can go to the pane in the bottom of the screen and you can see well what is occurring for my you know what is leading to the negative amounts and you can see that um, you know here we've got incoming um, a negative and incoming payments and we can drill into um, you know we can actually drill into these areas and we can see the transactions uh, that we think will be accounting for um, you know the cash flow forecast and we can drill into them so you know uh, there are a number of uh, AP invoice transactions that are uh, sort of occurring over this period that make up this cash flow forecast and we can drill into them we can drill right into the the forecast itself or the transactions on the cash account we can drill into that using the golden arrow and you know we can kind of take a look at what we think will be occurring here and if we're interested to to drill into these specifically so we can see that um, uh, in the 11th month in November we've got an outgoing amount of this and if we drill into this we can see that uh, you know there's an outgoing payment which would be forecast for for this time okay so that's how you use the cash flow dashboard uh, again it really is delivering the same data as the cash flow forecast report just in a more graphical way so you know this can be a nice 
dashboard for um, others to use in the organization. It's a little more graphical, it's a little more intuitive, can be good for other members of the management team like the sales manager or you know the supply chain manager that's looking to do some um, um, you know cash flow forecasting as well. All right, so hopefully this is helpful. If you have any more questions, actually, just before we go, I'm going to draw your attention to the export button here in the bottom right-hand corner. If we click export on this dashboard, it's going to allow us to export the data into Excel, just like the other report where we can export the on-screen data. So we're going to go ahead and we're going to do the export, and we'll take a quick look at what that looks like. Okay, and I would, um, it may not automatically launch, so if that's the case, what we're going to do is we'll just go into the folder and we'll launch the file that it created in the documents folder. That was this one. Okay, so some of the, most of the Excel uh, documents will automatically pop up, uh, but it looks like maybe this one didn't. Now, what we've got here, so we're going to enable editing and Pardon me, we just have some refresh issues going on here. There we go. Okay, so we'll go back to the Excel output here and you can see that there's a summary of what's in that bottom table below. And I don't know that there's any drill down in this report. However, um, you know, possibly in, in future webinars, I do believe there's also some uh, Excel interactive analysis a cash flow stuff in SAP Business One HANA. So if anyone would like to see that, certainly leave a comment. Uh, thanks so much again for your attention. Please leave a comment. Uh, please click like or dislike. And the reason why you didn't uh, click subscribe on our channel, it certainly helps us out. Thanks.